Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, please help me welcome to the stage my fabulous co-host tonight. Make some noise for Caramel DeVille! Oh, hi, Roscoe's. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, beauty. How are you? I'm lovely. I'm so glad to be filling in for Nation tonight, hopefully forever. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Honestly. <laughs> I don't think so. Thank you for the night, Beth. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have some guests here, We girl. have some guests. We do. Who you want to start with? Let's start with whoever. Go Alphabetically, ahead. Roscoe's give it up and make some noise for the one and only Adore Delano. Delano! Honey. Ooh. Hi. Can hey. you hear me? And ladies and gentlemen, if you will, please make some noise for our very good friend here in Chicago, Danali. Diva. Diva, diva, diva. And Willow will be here in just a few in minutes. just a minute. Have a seat, ladies. Ooh. Oh, um, so we have a couple announcements cool. before we start, because the show's going to start um, promptly tonight. Let's get it. Yes. Um, so first and foremost, um, please make sure you guys have your masks on. If you guys are not drinking or eating, yay? Yay. The winner of RuPaul's Drag And uh, here we go. Roscoe's, are you ready, Boots? Yes. First and foremost, let's welcome Willow Pill. Yeah. Getting it, girl? Did it work? Are we working now? We're working now. Hey, we're in there. <laughs> Sorry, I just took off my braces. Um, how is everybody doing tonight? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming to my prom. Yeah. <laughs> so, Willow, what was it like standing there, um, walking through that door? Um, you know, they make it seem like, obviously, there's all the music and the little sound bites and everything. But in reality, it's just like quiet and they just tap you on the shoulder and they're like, all right, go. <laughs> and um, you also think that you can hear the commentary, but you can't because they're so far away. So I'm just posing for like three minutes like, oh, ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh, and they're saying all that shit about me. <laughs> that is funny. That is so funny. Did anybody, do they do like retakes of your entrances or do you just get one time? Anybody else? I did three. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did, girl. Because I was genuinely upset that there was nobody else in there to talk shit with. That the first time I was so underwhelming. I walked in there and I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, no, you have to like pose and say something. I was like, okay, can I do that again? And then the second one was like too rehearsed. And then like the third one was like, cool. <laughs> I think I did mine twice as well because the first time I missed the mark. And first of all, I'm like cutting up all of the floors and ice skates or whatever, right? <laughs> Not giving two fucks. <laughs> but I just like kept walking and they were like, you missed it. And the camera's just coming closer and closer. And I was like, let me break the eyes like in the thing. No, I don't know. But, but Willow is right. It is extremely awkward. It's completely silent. Um, but at least you got to meet more than one person. That sounds fun. Right. <laughs> I will say that June, when June walked in, she walked all the way to the cameraman. <laughs> like, she wanted to be like a foot away from the camera. In reality, it's like five feet. And she just marched and she's like, uh, 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 uh. Jambalaya is served. <laughs> and the cameraman was like, no, go, go back, please. Okay, now as a fan of the show, I think we all love a split premiere, but Willow Denali, how nerve wracking was it when you realized the premiere was gonna be broken up for y'all? I mean, I didn't mind. Um, I kind of wanted that to like have a uh, chance to shine. But then when Rude told us that someone was going home, which hasn't happened in like three or four seasons, it was like, I was so... Prepared. The pressure was on. I was about to shit myself. Um, once I finally realized that it was a split premiere after the Pork Chop episode, I was like, okay, work. But I still stand my ground that it was the worst way to ever start a season ever. <laughs> <laughs> was the pork job episode. Do y'all agree? Yeah. Absolutely. It was so shady. It was shady. Dramatic. It was fucking rude. I was like, let's just crush all their dreams. It's very, you know, Tyra Banks, RuPaul, you know, <laughs> like next top model psychological warfare shit. You know. <laughs> but that's reality. <laughs> so, Will, I'm wondering how many memes are going to be made of you staring at Carrie Colby? Um, a lot. There's already been a lot, and I hope there's more because it's more attention on me. <laughs> Now, Willow, um, seeing everyone walk in, y'all all looked ready to go on stage. Seeing the season before you, did you assume or possibly think that you may have to lip sync right away? No, because it was so bad, I knew they wouldn't do that again. 
<laughs> Period. <laughs> It really was though, like come on. But you know, if you did have to lip sync in those beach shoes, did you think you'd be ready? Oh, absolutely, that would've been the whole show. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just kick them bitches off. I'm loving the format though this season. It's giving me like like old school drag race because I always miss the first photo shoots. Like when it, they used to like, I'm like, dude, fuck them up, throw them in water. Like, don't, don't we miss like detox, like serving the fuck out of that fish tank? Uh, so like, good. That was so iconic. I would have loved to be dunked in water in the ice skates and just sink to the bottom and just be like, mm. <laughs> no, it would have been so fun. Yeah, fuck me up. Don't torture me. I love it. And so what was your first impression of seeing RuPaul? Um, it was a very out of body experience kind of thing. I just felt like I was hallucinating. I mean, we'd been in quarantine for like a week, and they had to quarantine for longer. Twelve um, days. So when we were finally let out of our cages, it was like <laughs> and seeing other people for the first time. I was just so excited, but then I like blacked out these first two days. So I've been most excited to see this episode because I don't remember a thing. <laughs> It's very that though. It happens and it happens so fast. And yeah, like you're alone without your phone for a week, 12 days. And then you just are like 60 cameras, lights, a uh, room, do it again. Like just, it's oh, just. Yeah, when you, when you walk in, by the way, there's like. And we're back. What a fun challenge. I feel like that was a little more lighter than most opening challenges. Oh, it must have been so nice. <laughs> that looks like just so fun. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm loving this format me already. Too, you get too. to like have way more character development and like fall in love with like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. absorb them more. Totally. I like it. I like what you said. It definitely gives like old Drag Race vibes. Yeah. yeah I really like it. That's so fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How was that bidding on the wheel? Was it like, were you, were you just strapped in? Like, just straps? Yeah, they just put, like, straps on us. We had our feet and some things and had shit to hold on to. It was really nauseating. That's it went dangerous. on for, it was like, again, that's 30 seconds, but we did it for, like, you know, 15 minutes each. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. Oh. And RuPaul's just laughing the whole time. <laughs> and, you, and upon meeting Ru, you have to, like, do the banter and everything for the first time. And you're trying to be like coy and funny, but you're also spinning on a wheel. And then there's like two hot guys like touching your inner thighs. And Jada Essence Hall in between your thighs. Or was that Simone? Was it that was Simone? Simone yeah. It was Simone. Oh girl, that's funny. That's insane though. But like, it's kind of dangerous. Did anybody fall? Do you know if anyone fell? Or threw um, up? No, I don't think they have any sort of liability stuff. Did you get to watch any of the other girls? No, 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 no. This was all. They cut you off from seeing anything that was going on. Wow. They're really trying to keep it secret this season. Oh, they keep everything no, that's, secret. Yeah, everything that's secret while is. you're there. Mm -hmm. You don't get to see any previews. Did so, have you made any friends with any of the girls yet? Who are your favorites so far, Willow? At this, I'm trying to go back in time because it changes. <laughs> but. Ooh. <laughs> that's good to know. Shady. That sounds dirty. Um, no, at this point, I felt comfortable with Bosco because she was the only one that kind of got the joke of the entrance. Yeah. And so I immediately was, like, gravitating towards her. And no one else got it, so. <laughs> okay, what about now? Now? <laughs> You'll have to watch and see. <laughs> um, was there anyone that you knew besides Carrie walking in? Um, the only people that I followed going into this season was Cornbread and can I, okay, yeah, Daya. You all know Daya's on the show. <laughs> um, yeah, so Cornbread and Daya were the only people I actually knew who they were. Um, and that's it. No one else I knew. Orion, oh, she's uh, Grand Rapids, right? Michigan? So yeah, Midwest. she's from Grand Rapids, my yeah. hometown. Yeah, oh, okay. she's Grand Rapids, and she only had like 700 followers before the show, so none of us saw that coming. I really like this season's casting because generally with the pattern of how it was going, it was like drag families and people that were really followed on Instagram and things that you were already expecting. And then when the cast was announced, I was like, oh my God, like it was like a total turn from it and I actually love it. And there's only one New York queen. Right. Oh my goodness. 
fucking Finally. obsessed. I mean, they've cast them all, so none are left. <laughs> right, right. She's the last part. one. <laughs> they literally cast them out of the entire She's series. from Queens. She's not even a Brooklyn or a Manhattan girl. Wow. No, I'm obsessed with that. I'd love to see, uh, you know, like five Chicago girls in one season. That'd be nice. nice. <laughs> Personally. But no, I love this casting, and it's a really diverse cast, so... Same. Did the first person that was on the spinning wheel kill him in the rest of you guys? Oh, we'll find out later. Thank you. Work. Thanks, Sean. All right. So, let's talk about this talent show about to happen. Did you believe that Cornbread was actually going to eat hot dogs? Yes. Oh, yes. No, that bit went on for a, a very long time, and I thought it was real. I was really excited about it. I was kind of disappointed when I heard she was going to sing a song. I'm excited to see uh, Carrie jump rope, um, even though she hasn't touched one in 10, in ten years. 10 years. But you know, sometimes, sometimes you just have that natural talent. Yeah, with, yeah. You know, it's like riding a bike. Muscle memory. Yeah. Tap dancing, same thing, you know? Pick up the eight and go. Right? Same time, when I used to black out, I could just like still sing Bohemian Rhapsody somewhere in my heart. Like I just knew it. And I'm like, who sang that? Like, <laughs> muscle memory. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the talent show, um, right from the jump, is very all-stars, like, first episode. What was the pressure like when they told you that? Oh, my God, it was ridiculous. I mean, we found out, like, not that long before this, and so we just had to, you know, in all-stars, they have, like, months to perform that shit and come up with something, and I had no idea what to do. I had no fucking clue. So the, what I do is just a product of the chaos <laughs> that uh, led up to that. We're excited to see it. I can't wait. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I didn't do a great job of explaining what it was. I think <laughs> if there's one thing, okay, listen, when it happens and when you get the call, like, it's a small world and generally, you know, we all kind of key and we all kind of are like, ooh, whatever. And I remember this kind of being in discussion and you telling me what was going on. And I was like... Uh, what did you... I mean, you told me it was a good idea. What did you honestly think? <laughs> <laughs> when I heard it in text, I was like, um... <laughs> I was like, this could go either one or both ways. So I'm really excited to see it for sure. <laughs> but in general, I just think a talent show is such a brilliant way to introduce all of the girls. And I for think sure. it's such a smart way to be like, okay, these are like, this is... You're literally telling your own stories through your talent. So, I don't know. It's brilliant. And I, like, I'm just really loving this premiere a lot. That's good. I didn't like the last one. <laughs> I think it's important because they're, like, separating them, like, halfway. And then they're, like, what do you do? And it's, like, oh, cool. Like, I'm telling you, it's very, like, America's Next Top Model, like, old school drag race vibes. And I'm living for it. I like yeah. it. Go a lot. Gosh. So good. So good. So, <laughs> um, so Willow, you are originally from Denver, yes? And you've lived in Chicago for how long now, sweetheart? I moved here the day that filming was supposed to be done. Like a wrap on filming. Our lease was up. Um, I don't know if I can say dates, but this summer the lease was up, and then we just left like the day after. Work. And Work. so, um, yeah, i was been here for six months now. Awesome. Do you love it? I love it so much. Oh my god. I mean, I've been I've been um, visiting and performing here for like three years, three ish years, yeah. And it's been my favorite scene. I wanted to move here for a long time, and then COVID happened, um, so it just got pushed back and pushed back. And yeah, I was like, as soon as um, you know the opportunity comes, I'm going. Well, fantastic. Officially, welcome to Chicago. Yes. <laughs> I feel is like this I your first gig that you've done? Oh, no, no, no. I've done other gigs gotcha. so far. But. Okay. I, I met Willow at Berlin ages ago, yeah. um, and she, she was doing an Annie number with a red afro and a slingshot. <laughs> and that was all she was wearing. And I was like, I'm obsessed. <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait. Baby. Oh, I can't wait. That wait, was a misdirect if I've ever seen one, but I'm ready to see it. Was that a meatball? <laughs> Self-care, self-care. <laughs> That's self-care, spaghetti, right? You gotta eat. 
I adore. Um, you <clears throat> eating hummus again? Yeah, it's kind of my thing. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of my thing. Last time she was here, she's like, I'm going to get a rabbit, <laughs> and I'm just going to eat this, because this is what rabbits eat. I just, like, splurged <laughs> Sex in the City for the first time in my life, so when you said rabbit, I thought you meant, like, a vibrator when you asked it. <laughs> I was like, a rabbit? How do you know, sis? <laughs> but I've never seen Sex in the City in my life, and I watched it for the first time, and I think I'm a Miranda. I think so. <laughs> Anyways, cool show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yes. So Lizzo, seeing her walk in there, y'all clearly said y'all got excited, but how legit actually excited were you when she walked in the door? Oh my God, it was like mind melting. <laughs> I mean, when you see someone like that that you've seen on, you know, the videos <laughs> on the, the internet. Video, the video screen. Um, like that and they're in front of you it is insane. And I was waiting to see her, you know, on like on the, the guest stage, judges, yeah. but uh, to see her right in front of us. That was like one of the best moments of my life. It like shocks you, right? It's like, what the fuck? God, yeah. So, Adore Delani. Adore Delani. I like that. Adore better. and Denali. Adore Denali. <laughs> yes! I love that! I love that too. Who were some of the, your favorite guest judges to see on either of your seasons? Well, we didn't have any, so. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, had, we had three rotating guest judges the whole time because of COVID. Um, I love T.S. Madison. T.S. Madison yes. is. She actually just really like looks in your face and like gives you real life advice and it's just like it so it funny and so amazing. Um, and Lonnie Love, I really loved Lonnie. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I like Cher's mom. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was pretty cool off camera. Um, she was cool. I was just like I made a dick like a dick hole out of myself in front of her, but I was just like I thought she was so cool and like I don't know what's this for. Oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, that was mine. <laughs> okay, I want to remind you guys real quick. We are performing tonight starting at 10.30. All four of us, or I'm sorry, all five of us. Two, I can't count. We're all going to be doing five. that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be performing tonight, yeah. I know I never get to, so I'm here. Um, so it's not about me, it's about them. But I'm, <laughs> we're going to be here. Um, so stick around um, and... The boys are walking around if you guys need drinks or food because we're going to sit up here and be fat, so be fat with us. Um, nom, nom, nom. Don't fat shame us. <laughs> Attempting um, yeah. to eat under our, our face shields, which are, you know, doing so much You can to take protect, that off to eat, sweetie. <laughs> which are just doing everything to protect us. <laughs> Mine's not even on my lips. <laughs> Girl, the fuck? Let me, let me turn this upside down. Right it's just for the vibe at this point, I feel. It's just like, It's whatever. for the YouTube, That's so you guys for. don't cancel us or something. <laughs> anyway. Nisha's already don't been make... canceled. <laughs> it's like, before canceling us, cancel your fucking subscription to Grindr first, okay? <laughs> oh, you didn't like that? No, they didn't feature that. <laughs> they did not feature that. The straight girls in the front are like, what the fuck is that? This is so good. I love this. <laughs> Me too. Oh my gosh. So, um, I can't wait to see you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good season, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to turn out when we were there. And I'm like, oh, this is good. <laughs> Seeing that they actually allowed them to like add lip sync to their uh, talents, I actually like that because yeah, the thought of just going in there and producing a talent, not knowing what everyone else is doing, can be a little intimidating. So like, Carrie did great. Uh, I'm glad Cornbread and June called it out because I was gonna say the same thing they said about Alyssa, but it was good for me. Yeah, we all we all thought she was actually gonna play guitar, <laughs> and when I saw that it was like inflatable or something. <laughs> She's so beautiful, Alyssa Hunter. She's gorge. Gorgeous, gorgeous dresses. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> beautiful gowns, beautiful, beautiful gowns. Gowns on gowns on gowns. Beautiful gowns. Gorgeous, gorgeous gowns. What we've heard from the past is that sometimes they get to do the performances twice. Did y'all get to do those two times as well or no? We, yeah, we had to do it twice, which made it, uh, you know, harder. <laughs> Because usually, if you mess up, they usually put that one in there. Fair if they want Yeah, I mean, to. there there was little mess ups that they, they didn't show. Yeah. Why y'all gagging? Pheromone fell once, and they said she fell. Okay. Oh yeah. We use that one. That's it. Yeah. Like um, about oh. how long did you have for this challenge? Um, to like. Like to do it. 
Oh, to do it? What do you mean? Well, you said you did it twice. Everybody did it twice. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, they gave us a minute each. Oh, wow. So Whoa. it was quick. That's okay. it? Yep. Oh, shit. Wow. That's fast. And it, was, it had to be exact. Like one minute, nothing more, nothing less. Huh. Damn. Did you ladies have anything like that on your um, seasons where you had, or in your season where you had to do it? And the challenge was one minute. You only had one minute to do it? Yeah, for All Stars 2 when I quit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was it, a door? I said, I can't smoke a cigarette. I have to go. Um, no, uh, yeah, they gave us like a minute, but I was a rebel and I did like a minute and eight seconds. So it was cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, everything is fast on Drag Race. I don't think that anything was like, we were given a minute for a certain specific thing, but just everything is just like, fucking go, 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 go. And then they're like, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. It's like super rush to wait around. Yeah, that's all it is. Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. Yeah. I mastered that though. Like I would like not drink anything because I always like, I fidget and I move and I always have to pee. So like, I was like, okay, you're gonna be like a dry camel ass throat and you are going to listen when you are spoken to. Cause I'm, I'm very fidgety. So I don't know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Just oh eat my. your hummus, girl. I'm a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing first runway. Amazing yes. first runway. Oh, everyone looked great, yeah. Let's talk about our standouts. Who are our favorites, ladies? For the runway? Willow Pill. It was giving uh, Jet Set Radio Future. I don't know if some of y'all remember that game, but it was everything, Diva. That was stunning. Oh, thank you so much. What was your inspo for that, like? Toaster. Um, I'd had that, like, the, what'd you say? Toaster. The toaster. Oh, we're talking about the runways right now. Oh, oh. Um, I'd had that, like, blue leather in my um, drag closet for a long time. It was, like, one of the first pieces I ever bought. And it was from a little vintage store. And I just wanted to wear it with something, so... It's so it. cute. It was so cute. Um, Willow, do you make your stuff, or do you have designers? No. I mean, I mean, I make like, you know, twenty percent of my stuff, and then um, I had a friend make that cat suit, and I stole Evie's hair. Work. Work. Another standout cornbread, Bosco. I mean, I think everybody looked pretty good for their like first runway out. Fully. I agree. Um, yeah, at least in terms of like staying true to their drag character. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, if you were to just see someone like maybe Bosco, or not Bosco, um, a Michigan Queen, what's her name? Orion. 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 Like, if you were to just see an Orion like out of there, you'd be like, wait, what is this, honey? But knowing her drag style, it was like, okay, no, that like definitely fits and it's very cute. And I she like is it. very that. Like, I'm from Grand Rapids, so when I moved here, she had just started drag maybe about a year prior so like I watched her grow up and start and she Aww. is very crazy like that that's just our drag I love it I mean speaking of queens that uh, it's quintessential their drag can we talk about Willow's talent number real fast so yeah yes, yes. <laughs> to Enya at that come through <laughs> I don't want to steal too much air from it but like that is quintessential plot twist Berlin drag and for you to take that like bullshitting, not taking yourself too much seriously, having a good time with drag and to bring it onto the drag race stage. I just want to give a shout out to that because I think it's so important and it's so beautiful to see what I saw in front of my face in like Berlin, like there on the stage. That's all, that's all, that's all. Thank you. That was like, so I thought of that number because Enya was on the list of what we could do. And I was like, how am I not going to do Enya? <laughs> and um, I'd made a video with some friends in high school, like, seven years ago, of me throwing shit in a bathtub to that song. <laughs> and so I was like, I have to bring that to the stage. Because that's where, like, my comedy started, was making like, stupid videos with my high school friends. And then I was like, how can I turn this into a suicide joke? Because I'm suicidal. <laughs> So imagine seeing all of that in a text message and your reaction. Right. <laughs> now I understand exactly what you were saying, yeah. girl. I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I pitched the toaster idea to them, thinking there was no way they would allow it. <laughs> I was like, oh, and I can just throw a toaster in at the end. And the lady on the phone was like, uh-huh, and then? <laughs> And then I was like, wait, is the toaster going to be okay? And she's like, you know, I'll get back to you. 
And um, eventually they're like, yeah, we're going to do the toaster. And in quarantine, I laid awake every night thinking about this damn routine. And I was like, I'm going to make a fucking fool of myself on national television. I mean, I think Cornbread said it best. It, it, it encompasses your drive perfectly, and I think it definitely landed. If they didn't understand you, now they do. Now they do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Absolutely. it was a brilliant and perfect introduction because you stayed 100% true to your drag. Yeah, and when we watched all those um, talent shows, I was like, oh, I'm going home. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I was like, this is my last day. Ever on the runway, you look you so see, nice. But, but you saw Orion's though, right? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that was going to be my question. All right. Before we get into the runway, I want to tell you who our next week's guests are. Ooh. Joining us next week will be Detox. Oh. One of my favorites, Carson Cressley. Hey. And Rose. Oh. So get your seats. The live is linked right now on our Instagram. So go ahead and touch it just like you did to get these seats today. Yes, all the girls. All the girls are coming. All right, let's talk about this runway and these critiques. So as you were standing there and you were pouring your heart out to RuPaul about everything that you've been through in your life and how you, the darkness that you've overcome to be able to stand in front of her, what were you feeling? It was really emotional. I mean, when... When I was watching everybody get their critiques, I legitimately thought I was in the bottom. So I hadn't heard my critiques yet. Obviously, they've, you know, edited it to show that I was, you know, in the top and it all went well. But I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gone for sure. And um, as soon as Michelle was the first one to talk and she was like, oh, we loved it, I felt such a sigh of relief. I was like, and then when Rue was telling me how much she loved it and how she got it, I was, went from being like, oh my God, I'm like going home to like, oh, I'm going to win this season. <laughs> <laughs> you better. You fucking better. <laughs> I love that. That's one thing is people don't know is you're up there, right? And you were the last one to get critiques. So you're counting in your head generally, okay, good critique, bad critique, good critique, bad critique, or whatever, and you know usually, okay, there's three good ones or three bad ones, especially when there's only, there were six of you, right? Seven, yeah. yeah seven, seven, yeah. So you're just like waiting there, and it's the world's worst feeling because you're, you're just, you're sitting there listening to critiques and counting in your head and hoping you don't know. But like, that was so, I'm just so glad she got it and that everybody got it because... Oh, it was just brilliant. Me too. I mean, literally, when I was doing the talent, uh, their jaws were just like... <laughs> the, the whole time, there was no noise. So it's like, I'm just listening to Anya like... <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm failing. Like, <laughs> and then as soon as I brought out the toaster, she started laughing. And also, was, uh, did you so. pack the toaster and spaghetti, or did they have it for you? <laughs> no, they had, that, they had that all for me. Okay, hell yeah. You had to eat somebody else's meatballs? It was really good. It was oh, no, nah, bitch. Was Make it, sure that's seasoned. Was it, Willow, wasn't there like a chicken involved or something? I had originally asked for rotisserie chicken. <laughs> they said no to the bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't that want was, you to uh, choke. Too carnal. I think the spaghetti read better because it was messier. <laughs> <laughs> so did you throw the spaghetti in the um, tub the first time? Um, both times. They had two spaghetti. You did. Oh, okay. Because you said you had to do it twice, so I was just curious. Because you didn't have any spaghetti Welcome on back, the guy. All right, Roscoe's. Before we get into this untucked, do not forget we're doing Q&A after this with Adore Denali and Willow Pill. And then following that, we're doing our performances for Fuck It Up Friday starting at 1030. So stick around for that. Yeah, bitches. How are you guys feeling out there tonight? You guys still with us? Yeah. Yes. Isn't it so. fun to watch us cry? For 30 minutes. <laughs> I said, y'all better all cry the first episode to solidify some shit. Yeah, they're making real good sisterhood right now. Oh, I love it. I love it. You, I mean, you bond so fast with everyone because you're going through, like, pure horror together. Trauma. And so uh, I just felt like they were, like, my sister's day one. And they have you, like, cut in half, so it's, like, even more intense and more, like, you have more time to, like, set your eyes and get to know people's stories, so... I get it. Yeah, and then, I mean, this has been... <laughs> yeah. 
this has been an hour or whatever to watch, but in reality, it's, you know, 48 hours of being stuck together and on buses and, and everything, and you become each other's, like, survival system. So, how long are y'all sitting in Untucked before you go back to the main stage after the critiques? Um, that's probably like three hour, two or three hours. I swear, damn. What? Yeah. It matters. Each one's different, but sometimes they'll take a break in the middle of Untucked because they're like, oh shit, it's lunch at 4 p.m. <laughs> and then... Uh, you eat lunch at 5. So oh yeah, <laughs> we eat lunch at 4 or 5 or something like that. I remember when I got bad critiques on my episode and I was going home, uh, I didn't eat lunch. Because I was just, like, nauseous, and they are like, honey, you have to eat something. And I was like, no. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's just a mess. But, yeah, like, two to three hours, I think. Wow, right? okay. yeah, and it's so hard to eat because you're just shitting, like, seven times a day <laughs> because you're so nervous. Literally, I'm not even joking when they would call us to go, um, you know, walk in for the new day in the workroom every time. Um... Everyone was shitting. Everyone's like, oh, I got a shit. I got a shit real quick. Hold on. That's why everybody loses weight on the, like, at the end of the season. Like, I yeah. lost, like, two dress sizes from, like, just shitting out every Cheeto in my body. Besides the hotel room, it's the only time that you can be alone. Yeah. So I remember, um, here's a little insider tea. I, when I found out I was in the bottom with the lip sync against Kimura, I went and I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I had a corset on and I took the corset off and shoved it in a cupboard in the bathroom because I was like I'm about to fucking lip sync and I'm not going to be in a fucking corset so yeah the bathroom saves your life sometimes yeah. <laughs> oh it does no it totally does I before the talent show I went to the bathroom and I just cried I, just cried. I was like this is so awful oh no Drag Race is so intense and they put like a little hip hop beat and everyone's like yay but literally it's so intense all right, Roscoe's. If you love RuPaul's Drag Race, come out this Tuesday for Roscoe's Drag Race. Every Tuesday, starting at 11, with your host, me, Caramel DeVille. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so if you guys haven't been on a Tuesday night, come support our local drag here in Chicago. It's fierce. It's very fierce. Very fierce. Boots. <laughs> Bootsies. Bootsiana. Um, okay, go, so... Um, the house. While you were sitting there with Christmas tree skirt, <laughs> I thought that was funny. I, get to, I can laugh at her. I know her. Um, <laughs> she's texting me right now, actually. She's like, bitch, did you see it? I'm like, yeah, I'm watching it. I love her. Uh, I love her, too. I'm obsessed. Um, did you watch her meet the queens? Yes, I did. She was high as fuck. She was so stoned. Tell me she went high as She was high. Orion was high as fuck. the best meet the queens. Yep, she definitely brought edibles in her suitcase. Uh-oh. No, I love her. And there was, there was at one point, I said this so many times because I love it and I'm so obsessed with it, but they were like, who's your favorite queen from Drag Race? And she's like, well, me. And you know what I'd say to myself? <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I love it. I love I it. Please don't ever day. stop that. That I love it. So I'm much. very excited for this season. Um, so the next seven girls coming in, I'm very excited to see them. Um, yeah, I mean, when they just announced on the TV there's seven other girls, I forgot there were seven other ones. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> That's because like, you did oh, so this, well. This is the cast. <laughs> no. uh, but yeah, no, there's seven other girls, and I, uh, I forgot about them. But I know all of them. I was going to say, the next seven are Angeria, Diabetti, um, Deja Sky, Jasmine Kennedy, Georges... Ooh, Lady Camden and um, the young lad, young sir, Matty Morphosis is also joining Ooh. them. I love Georges. She's shady down there. That's the Ooh. hot shady seat. Y'all know that, right? They gave me a shot, so I'm here it goes. <laughs> Gotta get them liquored up for the performances so they do well. <laughs> I like it. It's like, I want to tell my, my brother, like, see, you can do it too. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going to turn the TV on and be like, see? Now what's my Christmas gift? Adore. How old is your brother? My brother is, I forgot. Okay, wait, hold on. We're all three years apart. I'm the youngest. So I am 32. My brother is... Five. 35. 
And then my other brother's 38. <laughs> <laughs> Math. I always it. soared. Thank God you sing. <laughs> we got this. So, Adore, what have you been doing lately? Um, just, you know, being a bunny and, um, no. No, um, I've just been, you know, like, scared watching CNN and, um, watching Sex in the City. I've been recording some new stuff and just... <laughs> Oh, thank you. We love to hear that. And um, yeah, working on like just like so like I'm doing like this thing that I'm gonna be announcing. And oh, I actually have this thing that I filmed with Kim Chi that is airing tonight on VH1. But like, I don't know like if we're supposed to say that. But look out! Ooh. <laughs> it has to do with the new Scream movie. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah. It was really exciting. But yeah, and um, whatever, petting the like neighborhood alley cat. <laughs> Work me. Denali, you went ice skating with Rose. I did. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, Roscoe's. Before we get back into it, tomorrow is our XYZ Drag Brunch, hosted by the one and only Coronation. Ooh, who's going to be here? Our special guests are Chicago locals, Olasia, oh, Boo Barrymore, Masha Potato, Stephanie, and Houston guest, Rufy Dubois. That is from 12 to 4 tomorrow. Make your reservations at brunch at roscoes.com. That's brunch at roscoes.com. Wow. Wow, thank you so much. I like what you're doing for me tonight. <laughs> Not fighting with girls? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much for making it easy. You're welcome. I could be Derek if you want. No, we're not doing that again. <laughs> that was him, a, him, That him. was a lot. Let's get um, aggressive. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to ask you something, and now she got me all flustered. Untucked. Darling. Something about the lip sync. Oh, yeah. No, I can't believe they make you guys sit there for three hours. That's wild. Yeah, you know, and you, you get one can of rue drink. <laughs> of rue juice. Bitch, no. I'm going to need a bottle. And then we'll really go out there and we'll work my ass on that runway. Is it a seltzer? Is it actual liquor? What's in it? Uh, no, it is, it is liquor. And you can have two usually. Oh, you can have two? Ooh. Yeah, but the thing is, is that you like, haven't... <laughs> I'm more fun when I drink. I promise you that. You much. haven't like eaten because you're so nervous oh, most yeah. of the time that it no, just like, rushes eat. into your system. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was feeling pretty, pretty lit by then. Oh, yeah. I say this all the time, but I was drunk on uh, the runway when I was doing the Fascinator Challenge, and I was in my rollerblades. I was in the top, and I was, like, feeling super comfortable, and I'm pretty sure I <laughs> stole three of them, because I was like, fuck it, like, let's get lit, or whatever. And I remember standing there, and I was like, is this ship rocking, or what? <laughs> it was fun. It was nice. <laughs> The worst is when you're like about to lip sync for your life and then you get like super wasted and then you like want to vomit your entire heart on stage like before you and after. Were you drunk for a lip sync? I am uh, not drunk. She was bootsy. Tipsy. Emily, you don't get drunk. Uh, yeah. I Has mean, anybody you know. ever thrown up at a lip sync after? Uh, Do we Will, know? Willem threw up well, and not that, a lip sync. Besides her. Oh. <laughs> we know that one. She's like, I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, no. were you, like, tipsy during, what was it? Um, I think it was, um... With Trinity? No, it was with Jocelyn for the, for, um, the challenge with, like, the brides. I hated my bride. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> he was like, I went swimming with my kids last night, and, like, his face was peeling, and I was like, I hope you fucking drowned it. <laughs> like, honestly. Jeez. That's All brutal. Right. That's brutal. I'm yeah. gonna start saying... I'm gonna go to the woods. I do that a lot. We, we do go to the woods and lay down in Michigan. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open up to a question and answer. If you guys have a question, please raise your hand for any of the girls. Yeah, we got one over here. Kara, what, do you wanna go out over there and do that I side? Will I'll do, do this that. side. Raise your hand, I will come to you. you. There. I'll come back there in just one second. We'll let her go first. Ladies. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, what? Hello, what, 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 what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. We're having like our own talk show together. <laughs> um, my question is for Ador. Hi. Hi. Uh, I wanted to know um, what your current musical inspirations are at the moment. Uh, my current musical inspirations? Your current music inspirations. Oh, uh, um, well, I'm like the Latina Taylor Swift. Um, it's like I date people to write about them, but 
I'm like, now I'm trying to change that, you know, new year, new me. But like, um, <laughs> um, so I don't know, like I just, I'm trying to like keep a more positive outlook on like what's happening, especially just because we're like, we can't escape the dark times right now. It's just like all around us. Like I was mentioning CNN, it just like put me in a whirlwind. But um, I don't know, just focusing on like the love that I have in my life, like my family and my friends and just like kind of like, I don't know, I wanna, I wanna pop my pussy again. I don't wanna, I'm sick of crying. You know what I mean? So that, yes. and um, that. Rabbits. Yes. <laughs> and woods. All right, I have a question back here. <laughs> Willow, did you write Orion a letter? And if so, what did it say? And if not, why not? Over here, sweetheart. Oh. To the left, to the left. Again? Um, I did write her a letter, but I have no idea what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. Good try, Willow. Ah. All right, over here in the corner, we have a question she, on. She wrote, let's go, girls. <laughs> let's go, girls. Let's go, girl. <laughs> okay. Just a general question for all three of you. What has been your most proud moment in drag? Hello. Hello. Our proudest moments in drag? For each of you, oh, yes. Oh, for each of Just us? Just one, because you all have a lot. Um, for me, um... I'm really proud of uh, the Chicago Drag Excellence video. Diva! Um, it was in the middle of the like height of the pandemic, and it was really, really hard to produce. And when I knew what had happened on the show, I was like, uh, cool, whatever. But like, I really want to make sure that like I, I don't know, take that moment to just like give back to my city or whatever. And if I could include everybody, I literally would have. But mm -hmm. it was so difficult. But either way, that's kind of still what I'm really proud of. No, Denali was the first person to literally uplift her community with her platform. Yeah. So, bitch, solid job. Yeah. Yeah. Adore? Um, I'm very selfish. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, um, just making it to the top 100 billboard with my two albums was like the gig that I wanted to do. Like, I mean, as a little boy from Azusa, like, that was, like, my gig, like, and I, I just, like, I felt it in my bones, like, I just wanted to, like, I don't know, I cried, it was a, it was a vibe, Aww. but yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Wibble pill? Um, I mean, I have a lot that are on the show that I can't talk about, but, um, before the show, I had this show called Pillbox in Denver, and we put on a musical called Pillbox the Musical. And it was just like a jukebox musical about the drama that was happening in Denver. <laughs> and my roommate Finn was in it, and it was it was just amazing. It was the shit. I'm all right. I got another question over here. So first, Adora, I love you. I have a tattoo of you in my arm. Um, I just want to ask. I know we're getting new music. So what's the vibe of this one? Um, <laughs> what's the vibes? Um. I don't know, I'm just like reading everybody's aura, you know, just, I don't know. No, um, I, I don't know, like I just, I'm just, in, like I said, I'm inspired by it, like just focusing on the positive and like the love that surrounds me, like the little that I have at home. Um, I'm trying to like just weed out like the negative stuff that's happening in my life just to kind of like, you know, uplift a neighbor. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just love, yeah. Come to Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Our question right here in the middle, divas. Where are you even so? Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, this question's for Willow, but um, Adore and Denali can talk about their experiences too. Willow, how did it feel to have to reveal your trauma and health issues on the first episode to Rue? What a question. <laughs> um, that, okay, so you get very familiar very quickly with how much you have to expose in the show. You do tons of like pre, you know pre-interviews and and, um, you know, you get, you get pretty ready pretty fast. Uh, they're talking about trauma all the time. It's like, you walk in the door and they're like, did your dad die? <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, he did. Um, so <laughs> and, um, so yeah, you get used to it pretty fast. It is weird now, looking back on it, how used to it I was. It's like you're exposing every bit of information about yourself to millions of people. Um, but it seems like there's only like a few in the room. 
<laughs> at the time, then you're like, oh, this is for everybody in the world uh, to watch. So it's very, very odd. It's kind of weird watching it right now, honestly. Um, but I'm pretty open and like honest in general, and I think that's what clicked anyways with me and RuPaul is that, um, you know, she says, talk about your dead dad, and I do it. <laughs> You can laugh. No, my dad died too. I just like try to find like that. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, yes. My dad's uh, still alive. Um, <laughs> but I can not with her. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, for you, bitch. <laughs> it's weird because, um, you know, understanding the reality TV format and then having that be an unfortunate kind of prerequisite to trying to get on the show is something that you do have to face before doing it and have to internalize and sometimes they don't even care they're like oh that's not traumatic enough that's not as traumatic as the other girls or it's like not important i gave them sob story after sob story and they were just like mm, no 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 um <laughs> but no like i don't know it's it's difficult and uh the reality is that like most drag performers i think do face a lot of these adversities because it's such an underground kind of grungy kind of craft that you fall into and yeah. you connect with other people that might have similar you know <laughs> dramas but uh but yeah it is just kind of like a un- reality of the show <laughs> yeah spoiler alert if you do drag you're mentally ill wait 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 trauma body for yourself bitch i don't mean to diagnose but i do mean to diagnose sorry try it all right, I have a question over here from this beautiful lady. Hi. Hi. I've never wanted to be like, mm, that girl, but like, I'm very excited to see a door. I'm standing on a pipe to see you better. Um, you could be that girl. Okay, so I know you get this question like, eh, all the time probably, but do you regret leaving All Stars? And if you didn't see it, spoilers, she doesn't stay. Um, <laughs> but like, in, I do think about it every second on the second. I just wanted to hear it from your mouth instead of on. Yeah, to actually just piggyback the the last question as well and incorporate it in this. Um, I think I wasn't dealing with, like, shit that happened in my life. I was touring from, like, Sweden back to L.A. to fucking Europe. Like, it was, I had no time to process what was going on in my personal life. So when they called me, I told them no twice. And then, like, they asked me the third time, and I was, like, on the phone with, like, somebody I used to work with. And I was like, you know, fuck it, let's do it. So I bought a bunch of drag and, like, just went, and I was like, let's just do it i think this could be a good distraction for my life and then when i had to sit down and actually talk about what was happening in my life um like it just hit me like a ton of bricks man like i was like sitting there like wait why is this bothering me so much and then like my mom's like you fucking idiots because you don't fucking like deal with shit and i was like oh thanks mom love you um but yeah it it just it, it it just happened like out of nowhere and a lot of people don't know this but like i was like backstage with rupaul for almost two hours in his dressing room like he was just like talking me into like staying and stuff and i'm like you don't get it like i haven't processed this shit so um yeah i don't know it's just i don't regret it because like at the time i just would have fell in third episode probably because it just it was shit that was like hitting me like i don't know without boxing gloves but whatever party (laughs) (laughs) I i just love you before we get to our next question, Adore, weren't they going to ask you back for another All Stars right in the middle? Right in the middle. Oh, hi. But they wouldn't let you do your talent. Was that correct? Yes, I was supposed to be on season six of All Stars, but we were just negotiating like too much. And I was on tour and I was asking for a lot. Like, I wanted to spit fire off of a guitar. And like, but like, I also used to spit fire in high school. So I was like trying to tell him, like, it's safe. Just use Bacardi 151. I know I don't drink any. <laughs> I'm like, I know I don't drink anymore, but it's going to be awesome. Um, but I drink again. Hi. Spoiler alert. Um, uh, <laughs> 2022. Um, but yeah, I was supposed to be on season six. Well, not supposed to, but they asked me, and I was almost there, man. Almost. You, when you were here last, you did not say that. You're like, there's something, and I'm going to save it, because I might use it one day, but you just, you just said it. Well, no, um, I did Or was say there something it. else? No, I, I said it oh, like, a I'm, little bit, yeah. I must but, have like, had a little too much. I didn't say this. I bought the fucking props and ever the guitar. I bought like these fake bottles that I was gonna break on my head and everything. And I'm like, yeah, it was gonna be cool. Damn it! Congratulations, Sonique. Yeah. <laughs> Our next question's right in the middle over here as well. 
Talking about, is this for Denali? Talking about All-Stars, would you actually do it? Would I do All-Stars? I would definitely do All-Stars. Yeah. You are an All-Star, baby. <laughs> um, I'm still a very young queen, so I want to take my time, make my money, do my touring, maybe not be in a global pandemic when we're on Drag Race or something like that. So I'm taking my sweet time, but yeah, I would definitely do it for sure. Come through, Diva. All right. Our I let's do it together. I'm fucking down. Yeah? Like Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, Latinas unite. You know, yeah. por vida la prima. You know what it is. La raza. We gotta stick together. <laughs> this is too much. Our next question is also in the middle here. My question is also for Denali. Um, first of all, I saw your Market Day Slay for You performance. Absolutely killed it. I Thank still you. think about that right I'm regularly. still waiting for the video. Yay. I mean, I actually looked through your Twitter like two weeks ago looking for it. I'm like, she never posted oh, it. I, I would if I could get it, so put that pressure on Circuit Mom anyway. <laughs> Following up on the All-Stars question, if you were to go on to All-Stars, what since you probably can't get an ice ring, what would your talent be? I can um, take ice skating onto the ground in certain ways, the, the roller skating and things like that that I can do. I recently did a tour where I tried it out, and I was like, hmm, actually, this could be kind of fun. Yeah, who knows? So that's an option, but you know, the Drag Race main stage is the Drag Race main stage, so there's a lot to think about. But yeah, I don't know. I would like to maybe do that, but I have a lot of talents up my little sleeve, so. <laughs> who knows? We'll see. Who knows? <laughs> All right, we got a question over here. It was you, right? Yes. Okay. Um, this one's for Dor. So do you ever go on dates with any of your fans, specifically a girl? <laughs> oh, um... Um, I've huh. never been on a date with a girl. I, I have in high school, but like, I mean, I came out when I was 12, so I think it counts. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. Like, you better shoot your shot, bitch. Yeah, shoot your shot. You man. better shoot your shot. Free love. I'm down for what I like hearts, not parts. Alaska Ooh, says. I love that. <laughs> New single coming out next year. How much? I like hearts, not parts. How much what? For the date. Like, how much does it cost? Yeah. A gift card to Red Lobster. Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell, even better, bitch. Yes. Our next question back here under the TV Divas. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. This question's for all of you, the most realistically Denali in the, in the door. Um, having been on a uh, drag race, we all love RuPaul's Drag Race, and it's an incredible show, incredible entertainment, but it is a show, it's produced, it's manufactured. How much, when, where in the spectrum between feeling shackled by like drag race and Trigger. fandom and all that stuff versus appreciative of it for your career are you? Oh, good, very good question. Very good question, Ador. We're going deep tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is like some like fucking... Therapy, welcome. How did this is the thing is the fans are not... They know now. Yeah. It's season 14. You guys know how these things go, and you know the functionalities of it. You know what we sacrifice. You know what we give. You know, like, the <laughs> storylines and everything like that. But, oh, that's a tough question because you... For me, being a year out of it and uh, feeling like I gave a lot to it and feeling like I left really unsure of how things were going to happen and then feeling like everything kind of turned around to how I didn't expect in terms of my own personal reception. Uh, that was really healing for me, that process. So um, Drag Race, uh, like the production itself is what it is in my mind, but Drag Race for me was made by um, you guys and like what uh, the fans did for me to kind of heal a lot of that uh, unsureness or like really just like you know, feeling like you're giving yourself a huge part of yourself, your trauma, your life, your art, your craft to this show and then hoping that like the world receives you well in it. It's a huge gamble, so it's really scary. And when it works out or when people see you for who you are and they like your drag or they like who you are, that is like one of the most healing things in the world. So that's really all I can speak to on that. Come through. Um, I just have to say, who made your hair? I love it. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Wigs by Marcos. He's from Italy, and this is my cactus hair. Actually. I'm down for it, bitch. Yeah. It's fierce. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Hi. What's your name? Oh, I'm Miranda. Hi. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what was the hardest part of Drag Race for you guys? Really? That's all you could come up with, sister? I'm just kidding. What was the hardest part? 
Willow can only talk about one episode, but... I mean, I thought I was going home, like, maybe the third. Like, I, I was really... I think the hardest part was just kind of, like, you know, like... Getting over, like, my insecurities and stuff, just because, like, I thought, like, I, I was like, oh, these bitches came to play. Like, I'm here playing hopscotch. Like, it's not, I don't even have a chalk. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm here skipping. Yeah. No, like, deadass, are you, like, second-guessing <laughs> yourself the whole time you're there? The entire fucking time. I can't oh. stand that you sit down, because I don't know where the hell you're at every time. I don't want to block the girls. The down. hair's big. I'm just like, I want them to see. Like, you see it on the TV. <laughs> every time I'm like, where is she? I mean, you can be the most secure person in the world, and then you walk in there, and it is so scary. I mean, um, yeah, if you're not secure in yourself, don't try out. It's like, <laughs> it'll break you hardcore. Um, what was the question? The hardest part. Oh, my God. The hardest part that you can talk about. The hardest part I can talk about. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't talk about the whole season, but... Just being away from friends and family, you don't realize how hard that's going to be because you're so used to, as a drag performer, like bouncing ideas off of your sisters and talking to your family all the time. And it's like suddenly when you're talking about trauma and you're like trying out new ideas and there's nobody around you that you know to bounce these off of at any time, not, not a phone call, not a text message, nothing. I mean, you feel so alone. It's insane. Uh, it feels like a, what's that prison experiment? Uh, season, what, 13. Yeah. <laughs> what, season 13. That's what season 13 13. That's what they said our first episode was the Stanford prison experiment. <laughs> All right, our next answer. question is right over here up front by me as well. Hi, my question's for Denali. Hi. Hi. Um, I just saw you on the Christmas tour Hi. in Grand Rapids. Who was your favorite queen to tour with? Oh, my God. That entire cast was everything. We had the top four from season nine. So it was Shay, Sasha, Peppermint, and Trinity. Oh, my God. What, anytime that Peppermint speaks, it's like a religious experience, and you're just, like, ascending. I remember this one night we were all so fucking high, and she was, like, she was talking about unionizing and just, like, the power of drag, and I was like... I just felt so powerful. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> like, it was just so like this like anti-establishment like conversation. So uh, Peppermint for sure. She was just like the mother of our entire tour. Um, and then there were like the young kids. So it was like me, Jan, Heidi, and Crystal, and Jada, and stuff like that. And those girls just, oh my God. They're just, they just have so much energy, and they're just so much fun. And I don't know. Uh, really, that entire cast. They, there was not a bad egg in that cast. It was so much fun. So truly all of them. Yeah, touring is, you're just going to have so much fun. I love it so much. What if she doesn't want to tour? Yeah, if you don't want to tour, then you don't want to tour. She's like, like I'm scared tour. of people. Doing drag with other drag queens is really fun. Yeah. Like, that's all, you know. Go ahead, Betty. I got one yep, over here I'm gonna after do right you. Right here. You, do you have a question, sweetheart? Okay. Are you mine? True, true. Thank My you. bad. You know the wig. What's your name? Duchess. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi, Duchess. I just wanted to say, Adora, I did not find you through Drag Race. I found you on YouTube years later, and it just, or, uh, on years before, and it was years later that I just so happened to like be watching. I was like, I know that that's not, it cracked me up. You were fucking hilarious as an influencer way before I knew you did drag. So it's crazy for me to watch your career like as you now, even like I got into that show that you were on with LaDemi because you were on it. I love you, girl, like 100%. And Denali, robbed. Fully robbed. Ah. Hey, I'm a real bitch. I'll just say it. We always want the Chicago girl to win, but I mean, and we got a lot of talent, but you really, really came out there and did your thing. Like, that fucking lip sync, and you know which one I'm talking about. I was listening to that, and that's been my jam for a minute, because you know we love house music. Yeah. That's been my jam for a minute. Every t I do this shit every from now all the time, and think <laughs> of you, because it was so good. So I just, I love all of y'all. I'm proud of you, oh, and you. I know firsthand that, that shit's hard so congratulations thank you, uh, thank, you yeah, thank you for that honestly that's so sweet thank you I have to say 
I remember you from American Idol when you were singing the Carpenter Sister. Yes. Long ago. I had just turned 18. Really? Yeah, I was a baby. Yeah, you gotta look that up. She, that's where she was first. <laughs> right over here we have a question. <laughs> In I mean, the middle, you divas. Um, this is a question for all of you, I guess. What is it like to go and like have this incredible experience and then come home and like not be able to tell and have no one know about it for like a year, months? Like, what's that like? I mean, I told fucking everybody. <laughs> well, besides immediate family, yeah. yeah keep, right. Keeping it secret, how was that? It's hard if you follow the rules. <laughs> but uh, who the fuck is following the rules nowadays? There's like 600 of us. They can't keep track. Yeah, I should have been sued like four times. I was like Period. telling all my friends, I'm like, don't say anything but... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. you start off really secretive. Like, you're like, don't tell anyone, guys. I'm serious. And then, you know, a few months in, you're like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm on Drag Race. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, you got to be careful when you're drunk and on Twitter. That, that in-between period from when you get home to when you're announced is really weird because all you're doing is kind of like prepping for it and talking to producers and managers and merch people and like getting your package ready or whatever um and it's really weird but uh, most if not all of your like close friends and chosen family basically knows yeah. so it's funny actually when it is announced and the people that are like bitch i had no idea that i'm like that's because you're not close to me anymore <laughs> That's good. You know what I'm yeah, it's and a that's, lot of like messaging nice. designers being like i've got a big project <laughs> I'm going away in the summer for seven weeks. <laughs> yeah. All right, I have one more question here for you. Okay, okay hello. Um, my question, mostly for Willow. Also, you guys can answer it too. Hi, Megan. Hello. What is, I didn't tell you did not roll your eyes at me this time. I so didn't. Oh, la, la, la. Nice she was nice for Actually, once. Nice <laughs> um, what is like the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? About for anything. For anything, best piece of advice at any moment. Um, for me, it was actually from the ice skating world. Um, uh, somebody, I don't even remember who it was, but back when I was uh, auditioning for um, like professional ice skating shows, they were like, know your brand and make yourself as exclusive as possible. And so, um, especially when you're selling yourself in the entertainment world, you've got to be this, this one trick pony. Like, what is it that makes you super unique or makes you stand out that like in this world of... Uh, in my opinion, like, like there's there's so many drag queens, right? And it's this world that is now just like super. What is the world like? Saturated. Thank you. Like, what makes you unique? So um, the second that I got the call and why why I made my audition video really different was I featured my ice skating because I knew that that wasn't something that a lot of queens could do. Um, so I did that, and it was like the second thing that the producer said when he's like, congrats, you're on Drag Race. I loved your ice skating videos. So I was like, okay, go in that direction. Is that what you're telling me? You know? So, like, best ad advice was, you know, make yourself as, as exclusive as possible. I love that. Um... Well, I first started doing reality TV when I was a teenager, so I remember the first time I went on camera, my mom said, the way that you act reflects on the way that I raised you, so don't be a fucking dickhead. <laughs> so I remember just like treating everybody with the same respect as Rue, the same respect as the judges. Like, no matter if they're getting you your coffee, no matter if they're getting you your lunch, they are there for you to make you better at the end of the day and to put on a show or whatever. So just being respectful and... And that counts out as like with touring as well. Like we've heard stories of like, you know, some of the gals in the past. So it's like, you have to really respect everybody on the same level. They're there to make you look the best, you know? Oh, well, I, I mean, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I mean, the red M&Ms, come on. <laughs> I was about to say, name names. <laughs> um, mine was from Evie. She t I had called her about the, what I should do for the talent show because I had a backup. And she just told me, she's like, whatever decisions you make about Drag Race, always choose the thing that's going to be the most fun for you. And so that every day when I woke up in the hotel, I was like, I just have to choose the most fun option of what to do. And that... 
Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Like, they see that you're having fun. This it is like so thing. hard to be up here and be like, what are the producers going to think about what I'm saying? <laughs> Girl, fuck <laughs> them. <laughs> you already did it, and it's already done. So it's she, you already done half yours. Is. It's such here. a gamble. Because that's is. what I said about me walking in on ice skates. I was like, this is going to be fun. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> It but you did out. it, and we remember you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our question and answer. Make some noise for all these girls! Yeah! Listen, we're going to clear the dance floor um, really quickly, so we're going to have everybody move out so we can clear it out. We're going to be back at 1030 with some performances. Please make some noise for each and every one of these girls as I exit them from the stage, starting with Denali! Yeah! yeah. Give it up for Adore Delano! Make some noise for Willow Pill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's my co-host tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, boo. Give it up for Caramel DeVille. Yes. And we cannot do this without our main host. Give it up for Batty Davis. <laughs> I love y'all. Stick around. These girls are about to twirl for you. You don't want to miss it. Um, so, yeah, we'll be back. There is no meet and greet. We're going to rush these girls right through so we can get ready for our show. So we'll see you guys shortly. Thank you guys so much for coming out and joining us.